Welcome to Follow Me and Die! Fog of War is a military term that indicates generals only know so much about an area and its conditions where a battle will take place. Here's the definition from Wikipedia. Uncertainty in situational awareness experienced by participants in military operations. You can find the link to discuss it from Wikipedia down below. During a battle, the limitations of intelligence, communications, and so forth have to be accounted for in the plan of battle. Close to the action, maps get marked up to keep track of unit movements, and back at headquarters, they're using those sticks to move markers on a map like you see in those movies. In miniatures war games, there are various ways to simulate fog of war, such as by screening opposing sides during the movement phase. And in board games, with cardboard chits, like the Avalon Hill board game Waterloo, players would place their tokens face down so that their opponent would not know their specific forces until they actually engaged each other. This idea is used in computer games to hide areas of the map from players. Way back in early D&D, players were expected to have a mapper and they discovered what the dungeon looked like through attempting to accurately map it from the descriptions by the dungeon master. In Roll20, Fog of War is a setting on each map that a GM creates. It allows the GM to reveal areas of the map. Now this is totally different from the Advanced Fog of War option available to Plus and Pro paid subscribers which allows players to see what their light source will show and will reveal areas of the map as they cross them. It is not the same as another plus and pro feature, dynamic lighting. Fog of War obscures the map until the GM reveals it. The GM can reveal it in rectangular sections or, or polygonal sections. Similarly, the GM can rehide areas that have been revealed. So the basic Fog of War is available in the free version, which is why I'm discussing it here, because I use the free version. For the Game Master, Fog of War is a semi-transparent haze on the map layer. For the players, it is a blank that keeps them from seeing anything not revealed by the GM. The GM can enable Fog of War on a map at creation or any time it is desired. What I do is get all my work done on a map before I turn on the Fog of War, as it's a bit easier to read especially with the multiple layers. I then turn on the Fog of War when I'm done, right before the session. So now let's take a look and see how Fog of War works. We'll start off, here I am with the GM toolbar options, and Fog of War is the little fog icon. If we look at the player's options, they have limited icons on their toolbar. Of course, none of them are the Fog of War. To enable Fog of War, we go to a Pages Settings, click the checkbox next to Enabled by Fog of War, and when we click OK on the GM screen, it will go gray. We'll still see the grid behind that, and if we had a map or drawing or other things, we would be able to see those as well. On the player side, however, everything is black because the players see nothing until the GM reveals them. So let's reveal something for the players. If we go to Fog of War, we have an option of Reveal Area, Polygon Reveal, Hide Area, and Reset Fog. Reveal Area is just a square. It'll set it back to white to the area that's been revealed, just like it was before we turned on the Fog of War. On the player side, they now have a rectangle they can see. And whatever was in that rectangle would now be visible to them, be it a map, buildings, terrain, icons of characters or monsters. And you notice the icon has changed from a cloud to the eye, which is the option we chose. The next option is Polygon Reveal, which lets us mark different points on the map. And as soon as we have at least three points, it draws a triangle. More points draws different shapes. 
and you can end up with whatever shape you want. You can either right click or press the escape key to complete the reveal of the area. Going over to the player side, you'll see that it's revealed the exact same shape and the exact same placement for the player. The polygon reveal has a snap to grid option where if you hold the shift key it will snap to the grid and align or the points align with the grid. Again, the same way to reveal, right click or press the escape key, the same shape is revealed to the player. Next is hide area. If you've revealed an area that you wish to hide again, click hide area and it is a rectangular shape again and you can hide whatever areas you want the same will appear to the players. Similarly you can reveal those areas again should you wish. Reset Fog puts the map back to completely hidden. Just like it was to start. Let's move the players over to the map I used on a previous video's examples. Here we see a character in front of a door and the character doesn't know that there's a room on the other side of the door. So this is what it looks like to the character. Let's say we use the polygon reveal to show the character what they can see once they open the door. Now that they've stepped into the room, we can reveal it. Obviously, if the room is shaped like a rectangle, we just use the regular reveal. And now they see the whole room. If it were an odd shaped room, we could use the polygon reveal. In my experience, if you've got a really large room that is irregular in shape, it's quicker to do the regular reveal on as big a section as you can and then use the polygon reveal to reveal the bits you need. Those are just the limitations of what you have with the free version of Fog of War. The advanced Fog of War as is described here and we can see a little example right here as the icon of the player moves it shows what that player can see. However you have to have either a pro or a plus plan in order to get that option. Since I have not yet exhausted all the options of the free plan on Roll20, I've decided not to purchase a Roll20 subscription until I'm ready to delve into more options. If you have any other questions that you'd like to see addressed about Roll20, please share them in the comments below. And make all your saves, stupid train. <sighs> until next time, may you win initiative and make all your saves.